The Chiropractic Philanthropist, Episode 248. Hey, when the voice speaks and um, you're called to do something greater than what you even knew was possible, go for it because you have no idea what your legacy is going to be. Starting your own practice is hard for many chiropractors. It's riddled with both struggles and successes. But here at the Chiropractic Philanthropist, we make it easy by having chiropreneurs and entrepreneurs share their struggles and lessons learned in life and business so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. And now here's your host, Dr. Ed Osborne. My guest today on the Chiropractic Philanthropist is Dr. Tiffany Johnson. Dr. Tiffany runs a high volume pediatric family care practice. She is a wife of 16 years and a mom to a 15 year old and a 12 year old boy. Dr. Tiffany has contributed to the book, The Peacemakers, Restoring Love in the World Through Stories and Compassion and Wisdom, which was published in 2016. She is currently working on her first book, which will be coming out in the winter of 2017, From Last Resort to First Option, How Chiropractic Will Change Your Life. Now, before we go to Dr. Tiffany, I'd like to actually thank our sponsor for today's show, and that is Innate.biz. Chiropractors, would you like more time to dig into powerful philosophy like the Green Books? What if you could use your commute time to listen to 20 hours worth of some of the best recordings ever made by the developer of chiropractic? That's right, 20 hours of BJ Palmer's best speeches, lectures, and interviews. These recordings were nearly lost but now they have been remastered and are available at innate.biz. Every purchase supports chiropractic history and you can get an additional 10% off using the code TCP10. So check out these free samples at innate.biz and download your collection today. That's innate.biz, B-I-Z. Hey, I'm great, thank you. I'm I'm excited for today's conversation because this is completely different. Um, you know, we're going to go through a lot of what we normally do and talk about in the chiropractic philanthropist, but I, I'm not, I'm going to leave a hook here. We're going to talk about something that's different too today, which is a bit of a share as well. So I want to make sure everyone sticks around for the entire episode. Doctor Tiffany, you know, tell us a little bit more though about you as a person, and then also you as a chiropractor before we begin. Okay. Um, I'm a wife to Craig for 16 years. We have two kids. Callan is 15. She's a sophomore and Gavin is 12, sixth grader. Um, you know, one of, one of our biggest passions is sports. We love sports. We love cheering, coaching, playing. Um, that's really what got me into chiropractic was through ankle sprains. I practice completely different now, but that's, that's, that's one of our passions as a family. Um, in terms of chiropractic, I've been practicing for 11 years. Mm-hmm. I actually had both babies in school. Tricky. Wow. So, um, yeah, that was one of my first personal, major personal struggles and or um, what we got through as a family also. But it's been 11 years, cash, family, peds practice. Um, I did play the insurance game for a little bit, but my biggest passion is mind-body connection, you know, how do we get these people to believe that the body is truly whole, um, every adjustment rebalances and reconnects, don't do any therapy. You know, I recommend supplements every now and then, but I don't mostly know what I'm doing on that, so just the basics. Yeah, yeah. So. A lot of, <clears throat> like, really just, you know, again, I, and I, I love this to, this concept of really just keeping it simple and, you know, keeping the message really pure and chiropractic. Um, so it sounds like you see a lot of kids, a lot of families in your practice. Yeah, I would say 80 to 85% family, 70% kids. Um, you know, once once mom gets the big idea, it's part of their life. So it doesn't become a treatment of a condition or, or any issue, but um, part of what they do of their lifestyle. So. And and Doc, you know, one thing we'd love to to start the episodes with is is really some words of positivity, an affirm, uh, affirmation, uh, a quote, some inspiring words. Mm-hmm. So I found this one um, from Oprah a while ago. It, it plays off one that I liked before that. But you have no idea what your legacy is going to be. Your legacy is every life you have touched. Mm-hmm. And I think for chiropractors, you know, we um, obviously our purpose is to change lives, transform lives. That's typically what we will 
what we will all say, but like from my my idea of what I thought my legacy was, because I'm I'm kind of left brain and right brain, I would I never truly allowed what was supposed to happen to happen and maybe trusting in the grander plan. So um, that really has helped me. Like, I don't even know where I'm, where we're supposed to go from here, but it's like what you talk about when you get the message or when you get the, what do you, what do you talk about? The when vo- the voice, the speaks, voice, right? when the voice th- speaks, yeah, <clears throat> I act. Yes, you act. And that is exactly what it is, is, um, not having something that holds you back to say, Oh, I don't, I just don't know if this is part of my plan, but Hey, when the voice speaks and um, you're called to do something greater than what you even knew was possible, go for it because you have no idea what your legacy is going to be. Yeah, I think I think you know, for me, especially in the past, I would question the voice, and so yeah, mm-hmm. I, yeah. Every time, and I, by the way, um, every time that I listen to the voice, I mean, it's thing like amazing things happen. So yeah, uh, yeah I'm going to encourage everyone to take that little tip right away from our our episode today. And, you know, mm. Doc, you know, we, we always like to say, too, that, you know, chiropractors, we eat struggle for lunch. Like we mm-hmm. just, yeah, we get the T-fell on, right? I mean, when you graduate, put, put your T-fell on, get ready. And so tell us of a, <laughs> about a time that uh, you struggled, a time that you fell flat on your face and what you learned from that experience. Yeah, it was about five years ago now. I'd been in practice six years. Life was pretty good. I went against the voice <laughs> and took insurance my first six years. And um, it came to a head five years ago, Was went through the audit process. Um, I fought my case. You know, I've always known just to push and push and push and push till the door busts, busts open. And I, that was a lot of energy, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. And so I pushed and I fought for myself in the process. It was overutilization and pediatric care and lack of documentation. The, you know, back then, I guess what was typical. And, um, so it ended up that I was suspended for 30 days out of my practice, no contact with anything or anybody in the practice, um, and on probation for two years. Mm. And so, you know, when you go through that, I've always kind of been of the mindset that the rules weren't really about me. So (laughs) here's my lesson, right? You have all these little nudges along the way in life. And pretty soon, you don't listen to the nudges and the Mack truck hits your forehead and it's like, okay, here here we are. And um, I remember turning to Craig after a family weekend in the car and tears were rolling down my eyes and I said I if I keep going if I keep fighting I I might die I mean Mm. like not only the the stress of it but the lack of purpose the lack of passion I spent one year thinking that I committed you know a federal crime and (laughs) you go through all those doubts and you can't you can't be in fight or flight mode and healing mode at the same time so um I let go and knew that there's judgment there's there's all those things that um will come with not being in your practice for 30 days, being required to tell your patients what happened, Um, eating that financially, I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And and I remember sitting in the meeting with these insurance auditors and the main guy looked at me and said, Dr. Tiffany, it seems as if you are a square pig trying to fit into the round hole. Hmm. And I said, you're right. I'm out. (laughs) That was my first, you know, I have went against what my heart said in the beginning, not being authentic to who I am and how I want to take care of my patients. Anybody knows if you're in that insurance world, you, you're succumbed to what they say, do and think. And that was my moment of, okay, this is my clean slate. This is my whiteboard erase marker. I get to create my destiny and my future right now how I want to be and where what I'm authentic with and use my heart and use my intuitive side and and just be and Mm -hmm. just about killed us I mean you know marriage financial practice I remember looking at my right hand woman and saying all right we got one last shot and we are going to kick ass (laughs) but we have one shot (laughs) because <laughs> mm-hmm. I can't do this again. <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and I mean, I've, I I don't know if, if many chiros who are listening right now, a lot of the chiros that are probably listening or docs are, are probably early in practice. And so, so, you know, be prepared that you can encounter a struggle like what you, you know, this is not an uncommon narrative. I've heard these this before. You're not alone, Dr. Tiffany. You know, this is... This is actually right. something that happens quite often. You know, even in myself, right. I remember the first time I had a, uh, like a board, like an association complaint, which is actually lodged by another chiropractor, by the way, in my town. And I remember like every time the Purolator truck would pull up for the next two years, three years, I think it even still happened about five years later it, when that truck pulled up and cause every time it would pull up, it was a a package, you know, a document, a uh, something, a subpoena from the freaking, you know, the board. And I was like, you know, so I was just, my heart would drop and it, and, uh, eventually oh. that kind of went away. But I, one thing I've always learned is look, when you're playing those, when you're playing in that space, you, you're playing by their rules, just play mm -hmm. by the rules. Right. So if that's where you want to yep. be, then play by their rules. I like to make my own rules like you. So I never really, so we stopped playing the, that game. We did cash practice and, you know, the, you know, proper documentation. I got pulled on, I, you know, some questionable stuff on that too. But I mean, it's, that's kind of a little subjective at times, but I, I want to just thank you also for, and acknowledge you for being so transparent because there's a, this is something that I think a lot of chiropractors don't talk about and it can happen mm -hmm. to anyone, anyone. anyone. Yeah. And by the way, I have dentists by the way, who get the same thing, you know, most yep. of that's about fees, but, um, everyone in every profession gets this stuff. We are not alone when it comes to this. So thank you for that. And so uh, let's, welcome. let's shift gears. I want to hear about something that's just truly inspiring that's happening in your practice or happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like it continues to happen. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was on North Dakota today. I've, been on there every month or so for about 18 months thankfully you know I I think getting the the peer message of chiropractic out to the community is awesome for all of us it is you know one person when we say the message in that peer way and it's concise people get it it's just going to help everybody and so I had this awesome idea of like how do I get stories out there you know that obviously Facebook and YouTube that's awesome but I have this I have this forum and they like me on the show so they know what I do already and so I brought Sophia's mom Sarah on the show and Sophia's story is when she was two she had her first seizure and stroke and from there she basically went blank she was diagnosed with ADHD ADD SPD, ODD, OCD, autism, high on that spectrum. And she slept for uh, two hours a day, like day and night in the 24-hour period, two hours, no more than two hours at a time. And she went from being normal and reading and writing and being social to completely the opposite, antisocial. Sarah couldn't work couldn't leave her home alone. She self-harmed like to the point that she would smash her head on the wall and break her nose because she didn't feel anything. And so she was aggressive with kids. She didn't understand that they didn't feel anything. Mm -hmm. And so obviously their life became quite limited. You know, they saw neurologists locally, Grand Forks and Fargo. They were doing 30 hours of therapy and doctoring every week and finally got the referral to Mayo. Oh yeah, they, she was on a thousand milligrams of an adult sedative also. They had tried many different many different meds to, to figure out what wouldn't make her a zombie. So they get this referral to Mayo um, about four months before I saw her, I believe. And that doctor finally was on her path of is there any way like will you support us if we were, look at doing some other natural things we don't want her medicated the next step was brain surgery they couldn't up her meds anymore there was that was dangerous of obviously mm -hmm. and so um her ot suggested a chiropractor so awesome <laughs> i sit down with her and you know, her brother said things like, I think Sophia's going to die. And, you know, this wasn't, this was not good. A glimpse into 
these these families' lives give you pretty awesome perspective on how great life is for us. And I said, you know, this is the deal. My job is not to fix or treat seizures, but it is to reconnect the body. Her brain and body are so disconnected, just like a safety pin, right? We dis- disconnect that loop and something's not going to work right. And I said, all, all I can do is eliminate subluxation in her body and get her brain to start communicating with what I have and my love and we we I expect she should heal mm-hmm. and Sarah looked at me and she's like oh my gosh really well I mean I guess I know no other I think the body's capable of doing anything anything that's possible if you give it the right stuff and so after her first adjustment she fell asleep on the table and that happened I think <sighs> a lot of pediatric family chiropractors will say that of high fight or flight gas pedal kids will likely fall asleep and Sarah's like oh my god I mean just started bawling like I think this could help her and I said well her brake pedal needs to be pushed you know it's like the Ferrari car with bicycle brakes doesn't work we got to keep tapping her brakes and get her body to heal so after the first six weeks they started with Doc at Mayo they started weaning her meds and in six months and she had to go off I mean she was in in the hospital for a few days when she would wean her meds because these were so nasty. Mm -hmm. But after six months, she had no seizures, no strokes, no ADHD, ADD, SPD, OCD, ODD, (sighs) autism. She started kindergarten this fall. No meds. (laughs) I mean, I, you know, this is what we're supposed to do. You know, we... Chiropractic is so much more than neck pain and back pain, and there are so many kids and families that are so broken because of poor health. And um, just like I told you, if if we can get out of our own way and find that purpose and passion and light to then help hundreds, thousands, millions of others, I mean, that's what our job is. It's an incredible story. What was the reaction? That, the, that you saw from, from the share, like once it started getting out in the community? Well, first of all, on set, you know, I'm, I'm on with one gentleman who's always been there who gets adjusted and the other one who's, she just kind of has a coat of armor up a little bit. And Sarah was so prepared. They were bawling, okay? <laughs> so that, that was the first, and I'm like, wow, this story kind of kicks ass. You know, I think because I lived this and you do, yeah. you did too, right? When you were in practice, we see this every day. And so um, I was just called to a different level and a bigger level in order to, to be real enough to say how much this does suck and how much life sucks that when stories come out like that, everybody, everybody wants it. And it's far more than I even, than I even thought. I, I mean, I know I didn't know seizures were maybe this common in so many kids. Um, so between social media and, you know, us just getting our stuff out there, it's, I mean, I have, there's people driving from hours and hours and hours away just because they found the message, you know, it's, it's the message. That's the one they've been looking for for years. Yeah. It takes courage too, to, to, it, it does. It takes courage to, to step up. And to, to share that mm-hmm. story, I think even like, cause I'll, I'll even get on the phone with some chiropractors and they're like, well, Ed, you know, I, I have to be really careful what I can say or what I can't say. So it does take a lot of courage to put yourself out there. Could you imagine Dr. Tiffany, if with that previous, you know, um, experience that you had had that, that struggle, if you had thrown in the towel, can you imagine? Mm-hmm. I know. I, I think about that a lot and how, um, yeah, how you, that's where my push, push, push comes from. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And there's, my mission here is so much greater than what I had achieved or given, I guess, up until that time. I knew, like, there's big stuff out there for everyone. So. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to encourage, you know, chiropractors who are listening today and, and around the globe, you know, over... 1100 chiropractors listen to this podcast yesterday alone, you know, to, to take up that, the challenge of, of just sharing the wins, sharing the miracles that we take advantage or not, we take for advantage, 
in mm -hmm. in uh, for granted in our own practices <laughs> um, mm -hmm. because because the public they they have no idea that we we can help or that the adjustment is that powerful one of the most powerful posts i've ever put even on the chiropractic philanthropist just on the fan page was um was a really just a short a, a little picture like a photo of actually uh, dr karen my wife and it was mm -hmm. post adjustment with a, a little boy named shazu whose story was so similar to the one you've just described and uh. um he he was just, he was unable to, it, I think the most moving part of it was he was unable to express affection. Like he had never hugged his mother. He had never um, shown yeah. any, yeah, it was, but what, what it was is he was giving Dr. Karen, like after she adjusted him and he'd been under care for I think two weeks, he crawled into her arms and gave her the biggest, longest, most Aww. loving hug. And mm -hmm. he was, he was actually able to do that with his, with his mother and, and his family. And so that connection, that level of connection, um, That's and amazing. we, we captured it with a picture, a photo, I posted it and we had a, over 1800 shares. I don't know how many likes, but it was a lot comments mm -hmm. and just like so many people were saying, look, how, where do I get a chiropractor who can help me? you know, with my child who mm -hmm. has this. So we need to help have more people really just know how we can help and the adjustment and the power of it. So thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. And so doc, I want to, I want to transition into back to the future. So back to the future is all about really just, you know, best advice, but here's what we do. We take you, we put you in a time machine. We're going to send you back to a younger version of yourself. And this is right after you came out of chiropractic college. You have all the current knowledge and experience you have today. What would you say to your younger self? Trust your gut and your heart. And it will always lead you where you need to go. And Doc, you know, what it, What would you say like right now that doctors who are listening and they, they are looking for resources, they're looking for inspiration, what is it? right now that you are listening to, that you are reading, uh, that you think docs should should go out and seek? You know, I have a few different, I'm a lifelong learner, reader, writer, all of it. I have a few awesome books that, you know, I'm a girl that reads six books at a time, <laughs> depending on my mood before I go to bed. And you know, it's awesome. Last week I finished four of them. And I'm like, oh yes, chapter done. Woo. So, um, a, a few of them. I usually have a communication or practice management business one rolling. Um, you know, the standard seven habits of highly effective people are mm -hmm. awesome. Have you read the mindset book by Carol Dweck? I have you not. Read that? Yeah, that's an awesome book and um, about parenting, business, school relationships, but really talks about when we start the, the one that, the thing that I really remember is this example was when they start, kids start kindergarten and we want our kids to be, you know, these overachievers and they start early and whatever. Well, when a kid starts anything on the low end, lower than average, they will rarely get above that in life. And so depending on their age, when they start, when these boys in this example started school in regards to sports, in regards to business, when you're the underdog all the time and you're not as big as the other kids, as smart as the other kids, as talented, um, rarely will those people get over that. And so that helps, that just helps me in management. Why well, I don't like to say management leadership, I guess, mm -hmm. in leading our team, leading practice of like how people's mindset really is and when it all starts. Um, you are a badass by Jen Sincero. That's a great, great book for, <laughs> um, I don't know, tuning into your gut, number one, having no limits, having no boundaries, um, how to give, get over those barriers, marriage ones, and I just, or relationships, keys to the kind kingdom and the queen's code are fabulous reads. I think for men and women, um, understands a lot about men and what stages they are and how we can make, how we can understand you folk. <laughs> <laughs> In marketing, um, Matt Loop's book, Social Media Made Me Rich, is awesome. Um, I think he's one of the game game changers, change makers in our profession mm -hmm. in how to get our messages out to the world. That's that's one of the reasons why I was able to get that that video out was all of the work that we've done in the last year from from his roadmap 
um, has helped us dramatically. So That's those the are my four or five or whatever I just said. <laughs> Beautiful. No, those are great. I, I love it. And so, so listeners, you can actually head over to the chiropractic philanthropist.com and we're going to actually have lists of all of those resources, clickable links, and it'll be on a dedicated webpage for our discussion with Dr. Tiffany jo- uh, Johnson today. Now, before we, before we kind of wrap things up here, doc, you know, it, I want to just ask you one final question. And that final question is really just like, who is the greatest influence on the person that you are today? Or even chiropractor. Oh, million dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my my hubby always says this is. <laughs> um, I mean, there's awesome thinkers. David Jackson, mm-hmm. um, Dr. D. Martini was one of my first really big influences in school. Um, Pat Gentempo. I mean, that kind of set the stage for for my chiropractic world. Donnie Epstein with um, with his philosophy of network chiropractic and energy healing in that world. Craig always says, though, Tiff, go back to basics. Do the shit that works. <laughs> I'm like, oh, see, sometimes our minds go to, because we're visionaries and because, you know, to change the world, we go to that big place and that big place is where we need to go yet not that's not the first step so if you can't get back to basics and do the shit that works find somebody who can help you in your life and in your business to ground you or do that do that for you because i you we just can't jump from the now to the to the big old vision and understand it and um obviously like i've said before that heart you got to listen to the voice got to listen to your heart Mm-hmm. The lessons just become stronger. <laughs> well, there you have it, listeners. I mean, definitely seek out that that list of of mentors and and pe- leaders in the profession um, that Dr. Tiffany has listed there today. I mean, all of them have been a he- heavy influence on on even myself and the Chiropractic Philanthropist podcast as well. So thank you so much. Thank you. Well, my pleasure. And thank you so much for giving back. So you've heard the struggles, you've heard the successes, and this episode is done. But there's still so much more to come and so much more to learn. Head on over to the chiropracticphilanthropist.com and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive free practice building tips and strategies, including how to market your practice with your very own podcast and so much more. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time on the Chiropractic Philanthropist.